Hello and welcome to another wonderful episode of Iron Port. This program is proudly brought to you by Serene Insurance, Gold PLC, the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Link, Meridian Port Services, and Phoenix Insurance. Our proud media partner is the Business and Financial Times. This program is powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Now, this week we are taking a look at the best practices in the sustainability of the fisheries sector. And we had in the studio some two experts who are well versed in this particular subject to take us through this particular discussion. Let's take a listen. Uh, let me begin with you and uh, try to find out from you what the key challenges are uh, facing the, the fishery sector in Ghana. I, I would want to say, first of all, though, that a lot of strides have been made in the fishery sector so far. And if we are to ensure sustainability, we, we would have to keep at the various interventions as well as also step up enforcement, as well as um, alternative livelihood strategies. These three things are very important. We need to continue with the intervention so far, make sure enforcement and prosecution is top notch, as well as also promote sustainable and alternative livelihoods. And um, as we go on, we'll go into deeper details about some of these strategies. Right. So I'm still sticking with you briefly. I just want to find out from you uh, about the issue of overfishing, how this is impacting the Ghana, uh, Ghana's fisheries industry, uh, the ecosystem, marine ecosystem in Ghana, and uh, what measures are being taken, if you are aware, uh, to address some of these issues. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, I'm glad Rista is there. So I'll speak for the artisanal sector. Um, we had an issue due to open access as well as overcapacity. Um, but in recent months, um, there have been various interventions, such as the moratorium on entry for canoes. So as of last year, new canoes couldn't, cannot go into the fishery, the artisanal fishery, um, for the next three years. So if we're talking about this year, that means for two more years, no new canoes are going to be allowed into the fishery sector. Um, there are quite a number of other interventions such as prosecution, um, formation of committees, uh, marine protected, uh, the designation of a marine protected area, as well as the adoption of the 2022 to 2026 Marine Fisheries Management Plan. Um, that being said, there are still a few threats to our marine fisheries. First of all, there's still the issue of illegalities in the fisheries sector. And although there are a lot of interventions now, talk about the electronic monitoring system on industrial vessels, um, as well as um, formation of landing beach committees, we still finding incidences of fishermen still using illegal fishing methods to maximize the catch. However, um, because our fisheries, our fish stocks went down to very low levels, um, the fear is that um, if we don't do anything, we may have actually gotten to that point where the stock, the stock number, the stock numbers are so low that it's going to take quite some time to um, for us to get any appreciable gains. Um, added to that is the fact that, for example, we have the closed fishing season, and it would take most of our small pelagics a year to two years for them to grow to market size. But right after the closed fishing season, we are still seeing um, the use of very small size fishing nets we call poly nets, which in effect are also taking out the juveniles or the new hatchlings are out of the system. Also bringing climate change and pollution, and we're seeing so many other things going on. Now, um, the threat is that when you have overfishing and then the numbers of key species dwindle, it affects what we call the food chain. And let me give an example of a food chain we have mm. in our fishery. Right. Um, so we have our plankton being the small organisms that are floating in the water, which are fed on by um, anchovies, what we call um, ammoni or ammoni. Ammoni, yeah. In turn, the, mac yeah, the mackerel, which we call salmon, which shouldn't be called salmon, but the mackerels, they prefer the anchovies. Mm. And then from there, the tunas feed on the mackerel, and then you have the dolphins and the bigger, 
scale fishes coming in. Right. In the event where a uh, small pelagic, say the anchovies get overfished, mm. it's going to have a domino effect um, down or up the food chain, if I should put it that way. Mm. And then the apex predators or those um, consumers that will feed on these, what we call forage fishes, we realize that their numbers will also get affected. Um, let's bring in the interplay of pollution. Um, for example, where we now have a lot of silt and sediment from our rivers that are being affected by Galamse right. going into the ocean. Um, we also have underwater some remnants of reefs or coral reefs or rocks yeah. where a lot of our demersals, be they red fishes, what we call the spirits, groupers and others, um, where they also spawn or lay their eggs. But we are realizing that as more and more layers of this fine sediment is going out, it's smothering the eggs that these species are laying and making survival go down. Um, let's even talk about heavy metals, the potential impacts of the continual deposition of mercury, arsenic, cyanide, and other metals into the ocean. Over time, these levels are going to accumulate in our fish species, and they also come with their own public health implications, both for the ecosystem and for humans as well. Right. Okay, right. Thank you very much, Docs. I'll come to in studio now and uh, speak to Mr. Amar Mafia and find out from you how um, artisanal uh, and then uh, industrial fishing is impacting sustainability uh, in terms of, uh, you know, their, their impact of the sector well like what role do they play so to speak well like doc said um i'm sure you are aware we have various sectors we have uh, even with the artisanal we have the inshore and then um canoe. yes and then we have the industrial troll and then we have the industrial tuna so basically for the marine sector we have four subsectors um the artisanal, artisanal sector are allowed to fish within what we call the inshore exclusive zone. Right. So that is uh, six nautical miles, miles, six nautical miles or 30 meter contour depth, right. whichever is further. So when we say, which, so if you get to a 30 meter contour depth, you are not at the six nautical mile, mm. then the applicable distance will be the six nautical mile. Right. So if you get to six nautical mile and you are not yet within a 30 meter contour depth, then the applicable depth will be uh, the 30 meter contour depth. Right. So that's the initial exclusive, exclusive zone. Yeah. And so you allow only the artisanal sector, which is the inshore sector and the trust and, and the Kenun people to fish within the IEZ. Right. Now, the challenge is that you, when you have smaller fish species, especially when the fish spawn, yeah. they migrate closer to shore. Mm. And because we do not regulate the mesh size, you probably allow the artisanal sector to fish the smaller fish or the juvenile yes. most of the time. Yes. Especially when they are using the, the, and the less than an inch mesh, mesh. size. Yeah. You are, you've also observed that we have a lot of beach seining. Yes. Uh, those who drag the net at the beach. Yes. And when you go and you observe their catches, mm. most of their catches are juvenile right and small fish absolutely so you have beach seining all over the coast and a lot of them do their beach seining close to estuaries right and so the relationship between the estuary and the ocean uh, also aids in spawning right so you create a lot of challenge when they spawn around the estuary but you have a lot of rich resources around the estuary so when they spawn out the beach seining around the estuary you create a lot of challenges right the numbers that we have, 12,000 canoes, is been proven to be too much. Mm. And so it becomes a challenge in terms of what we are landing. Right. And then we need to do reclassification of the artisanal sector. Right. When we were young, most of the canoes were smaller. Mm -hmm. Now you have very big canoes mm. that may have to be reclassified as commercial canoes. Canoes, yeah. Rather than just classifying them as artisanal canoes. Right. Because if you don't do the reclassification, then it becomes difficult for you to manage them. Mm. Because some of them have very big and wide fishing nets mm. that needed to be managed beyond just treating them as 
artisanal activity. Mm. So for the artisanal sector, these are key issues. You, we, mm. She spoke about the closure on the entry yes. of new canoes. That is the directive. For two that, years. Yeah, that's the directive. Yes. You see, unfortunately, it is not the Ministry of Fisheries that regulates the forestry. It's right. the Forestry Commission. And one challenge you have is that for example, we, we did not cap it. So the Forestry Commission may have issued permit already for some people to harvest the tree, or some people may have already harvested the tree. Yeah. So even though there is a closure to entry, the closure may only affect new harvesting mm. and not those that have been harvested already and are there and being carved to be used as canoe. Yeah. So you may find new canoes that are entry because they may already have had their permit and the trees may have been harvested. It mm. is also good in the preservation of our forest. Right. That's very important. But then, probably we may have to extend it to our five years mm. in order that we have an early cap and then you have a longer period that you don't have entry. Now, when you are not getting entry, the next thing you might have to do is to look for alternative, mm. not just alternative livelihood, yeah. but alternative trade for younger persons who are in the fishing industry. Right. Because if you provide them, and I've always said this, that provide them with basic literacy mm. and numeracy mm. and let them develop it so that they are able to move out of the industry because when they start reading and writing and they begin to understand, they'll do things differently. They may want to explore other opportunities. Absolutely. Some may want to have further education. Right. Because if you do not create that avenue, mm. then you have a challenge of creating a lot of un unemployment right. because um, there won't be new addition to the industry. Mm. And then they are mono-skilled, and so they are, there are no space for them in the industry. Right. So they may now become redundant, and that become a danger. Mm. So whereas you are implementing the policy on reducing the entry into the industry. One of the things we need to look at is how do we create opportunities for younger fishers to learn trade, to have education, uh, normal numeracy education, those mm. who can, so that they now become useful to themselves beyond just fishing. Iron Port returns after this break. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, are they come? Shut up! Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey, go for that boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes. Yeah. Our taxes, our future. Our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory 
and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas, covered with the marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302. 246319 or 0243 At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. Welcome back from the break. Now, news and activities happening within the port and maritime industry next. The president of Italy, Sergio Mattarella, has lauded the collaboration between the Italian Navy and the Ghana Navy in their pursuit to fight piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. He commended the efforts by the two countries as well as other countries to make the sea a conducive place for maritime business to thrive. The Italian president made this known when he visited the Italian naval ship Commandant Bettica at the port of Tema as part of his three-day working visit to Ghana. He commended the Ghana Navy for welcoming the Italian Navy vessel for a common goal goal of security and freedom for maritime transport and communication. This operation is extremely important to ensure peaceful coexistence, also to include and also to support the freedom of the sea through the freedom of navigation. And this also can be achieved once again through cooperation thanks to which piracy can be countered, as well as illicit trafficking. The Minister of Defence, Dominic Nitiwo, said the three months that the Italian Navy will spend in the country will benefit the countries along the Gulf of Guinea. There's a lot we can do together. The ability to work together and the effectiveness by which we work together. And what we are going to gain in working together would only go to strengthen the two. There was a simulation exercise to demonstrate the skillfulness and collaborative tendencies of both the Italian and Ghanaian Navy to combat piracy. In 2023 recorded 36 incidents of maritime piracy, a sharp decline from 2020 when 132 incidents were recorded. Even though the region is not out of the woods yet, it is important to note the role maritime domain awareness and training, among other factors, have played in the remarkable decline in maritime insecurities. As part of the European Union sponsored support to the ECOWAS Integrated Maritime Strategy Project, also known as WEMS, which was launched in 2016, the Regional Maritime University has been training sea actors, naval and law enforcement officers across West Africa. The fourth and final edition of this operational training course has commenced at the university to build on the success of previous years. The growing maritime insecurity has affected the legitimate use of the seas, impaired the exploitation of coastal resources, 
and continue to undermine regional security as well as the realization of the blue economic potential of this region. The project coordinator, engineer Augustus Adilamte, rehashed the importance of continuous maritime domain awareness and training as recent events demonstrate the persistence of the enemy at hand. There are two main objectives for the SWIMS project. The first is governance and law enforcement frameworks and prosecution and adjudication of maritime crimes. Maritime law consultant and legal practitioner Dr. Imano Kofimbia also called for continued collaboration among regional partners to remain vigilant in this collective approach the countries in the region have embarked on. The challenges are still there, but we need to be vigilant. We need to keep an open mind. We need to ensure that there is a collaboration between the various partners. And once the knowledge, information sharing goes on, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with this uh, in very large proportions and large measure. The Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, CILT, has organized a business forum to discuss the cost of doing business in Ghana sports, as well as its implication on import and export trade. The forum had participation from key stakeholders like the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Shipping Lines, Ghana Express Authority, among other logistics firms. The General Manager for Corporate Planning at the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Khalid Nuhu, said the Port Authority regulates charging system at the port in a balanced manner by ensuring that private entities don't overcharge and the public also don't underpay for services rendered to them. He said GPHA has invested a lot in infrastructure at the port to be able to serve the port community in an efficient manner. Khalid Nuru said the elimination of inefficiencies, delays and bureaucracies will go a long way to reduce the cost of doing business at the port. Inefficiencies, uh, bureaucracies and delays that are implicit in the cost of doing business. Normally we don't talk about that, but for me, those are issues that needed to be identified and dealt with. An executive member of the Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana, Adam Ayana Imoru, said the charges of the shipping lines are to recoup the cost they incur in order for them to stay in business. When I hear people saying shipping lines are a rip -off, one minute, oh, shipping lines are a rip -off. they are making cost of doing business in Ghana. Uh, Ghana ports very high. The next thing you see in the papers, oh, the ports is very expensive. That's why they are losing cargo to uh, Lome. But both are not true. You know, I checked with all the lines here. If they were losing cargo, both tramp and container, if they are losing cargo to Lome. And they told me it's not true. Cargo coming to Ghana is coming to Ghana. The head of shipper services and trade facilitation at the Ghana Shippers Authority, Monica Josiah, reviewed some statistics on handling charges by some ports in the West African sub-region. When you look at the ports, government taxes take a greater chunk of the cost. The handling charge, that's the receipt and um, delivery charge by the GPH, was just 2.5% Sema, then Abidjan 2.6, and Lume about 2.4. I mean, they are around the same side. Earlier, the global president of CLT, Chief T.T. Ousunote, paid a curtsy call on the Director General of the Ghana Port and Abbas Authority, Michael Luguje, to discuss issues related to transport and logistics that are mutually beneficial. Ousunote, who is the first African and Ghanaian to occupy the CLT higher office, said he was committed to promoting business from Ghana. He commended the Director General of the Ghana Port and Abbas Authority for his continuous support to the Institute. My core interest is to make sure that I promote business Primarily from my home country, because there's an adage that says that charity begins at home. I have to strengthen my home base. Michael Luguji underscored the importance of logistics in the global supply chain. For GPHA, I mean, you know our, our contribution to that institute in terms of membership. And I think any time there are programs that our assistance is sought, we try to at least contribute our own resources and try to support. It's an organization that... Um, you know, it has all, it is important today and it will remain relevant for the rest of, uh, the rest of time. Because logistics is everything. Yeah. Everything is logistics. We cannot um, ignore its importance. And it's only natural for us to be associated with what is relevant to, uh, to mankind and um, the movement of goods from A to B. 
The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority has vowed to clamp down on diversion of transit cargo in the country. At a stakeholder engagement on securities of transit cargo in Tema, the acting deputy commissioner of the suspense regime, Fletcher Nakoto, said the country loses a lot of revenue as a result of diversion of cargo as the need for all stakeholders to be involved to nip the practice in the bud. From what they gather from them, they all agree there is diversion. Our uh, objective is to make sure that we root out that dimension, the dimension completely. The stakeholder engagement was meant to discuss the issues of overloading and overgauge, overheight of transit vehicles, shedding of overloaded transit vehicle resulting in malfeasance, weight declaration on transit tracks by agents at transit terminal, containerization of fire risk goods, monitoring of transit goods along the corridors to exit points, and introduction of the SIGMAT to strengthen transit goods. The event was also used to solicit challenges transitors face in transporting their goods from the port to their country of origin. The regional maintenance manager of the Ghana Highways Authority for OT region, Albert Annan, called on truck drivers to desist from overloading. The deputy operations manager at Ghana Link, Emmanuel Kwagbela, said the training will go a long way to facilitate the clearance of transit goods at the ports of Ghana. This the transit manager at the port of Tema, David Songotu, called on all stakeholders to collaborate in ensuring that the transit trade rakes in the needed revenue. It is very important that we encourage the trade because if I told you this minute that we have over 2,000 people working because of this trade, earning their livelihood. It's now time for some international ports and maritime news. Dutch shipping company, Zemen Shipyards Group, and French shipping giant, CMA CGM, have entered into a cooperation that will result in around 100 of the latter's vessels receiving significant modification. The key feature of the cooperation will be the installation of bulbs on the bows of the vessels. The upgrades will take place at Zemen Ship Repair Dunkirk and Zemen Ship Repair Amsterdam. Specifically, nine stops by CMA CGM vessels are scheduled for this year. Five are Damien Ship Repair Dunkirk and four are Damien Ship Repair Amsterdam. Three of these will be for the installation of bow bulbs, with the first being on the liquefied natural gas LNG fueled container ship attic. The 120 ton bulb has been fabricated at Damien Ship Repair Amsterdam and will be featured there shortly. The remaining two vessels will be the 336 meter attic and the 170 meter Aurora. During his inaugural visit to the port of Antwerp in Belgium, methanol powered container ship and MESC completed its first banker operation in European waters. On April 1st, 2024, the world's first large methanol powered deep sea vessel docked at the MSC PSA European Terminal. The 16,592 TU box ship banked 4,300 tons of green methanol and 1,375 tons of biodiesel during the port stay. For the port, it was the first methanol bunkering involving an ocean-going vessel. The bunkering process was integrated into the vessel's port stay, combining bunkering simultaneously with unloading and offloading of cargo. The so-called simultaneous operations increased the efficiency of the ports by lowering additional time allocation for refueling. Now, scandals of vessels in the port, those at Anchorage and those expected in the coming week, the Bank of Ghana exchange rate. You need to know to clear your goods from the port next.
let's now take a listen to the phrase of the day. Short shaped. Short shaped refers to a cargo missing a vessel that it was originally intended for. Your comments are next. Good evening, I am Port. Great discussion. There is the need for government to invest more into the fishery sector because it employs a lot of Ghanaians. Dan from Nungwa. So that's all for this week's episode of Iron Port. Thank you for watching and thanks to the entire crew. Join us same time next week.